you guys are discussing that you don't believe in? No, I don't believe in space. I'm more like, you know, so I think like just right now, I think there's like other planets and stuff like that. I don't know. What, what, what led you to that point to believe that? Um, well, like, I really, I thought you should believe in like the helium situation, like being some wild rims and stuff, but then like, I started seeing like flat earth stuff, and I'm like, Yep, you heard him right. He said, I don't believe in space. Well, we're going to comment on this in just a second, but first I want to welcome you to Truth Unbound. I'm your host, Walter Swaim, and this is the podcast where we take the issues and trends and questions in the culture or about God, the Bible, and life in general, and we find God's answers in his word to each and every one of them. So what does this young man mean when he doesn't says he doesn't believe in space? Does this have an answer in scripture? Well, I'm pretty sure it does. So let's go ahead and do it right now. Hey everybody, just before we get into the topic, just real quick, two things. If you would like to stay at home, yet also attain a solid biblical degree and do that around your work schedule, getting anything from a certificate to a doctorate in biblical studies or education or leadership, then Louisiana Baptist University has that for you and at one third of the cost of most seminaries and Bible colleges. So apply today at lbu.edu forward slash apply and get to know God's word more deeply and prepare yourself better to serve him. Now, also concerning the podcast itself, if you want to know how God's Word answers today's dilemmas in the culture and society and and in the church and in life, then would you click on like and then also click to follow Truth Unbound and then share the episode with everybody, all right? So let's get back to the question, is there really no outer space at all? So Texas Tech Safety Tyler Owens said he doesn't believe in space. He doesn't believe there are planets and stars and all that. It all simply doesn't exist in reality. He seems to base this on, based on his words here, very fleeting, uh, is that he bases all of this on the flat earth theory. Now, before I go further, let me make clear, we're not here to make fun of him. He seems sincere and respectful, and we need to be the same toward him as well. What he is saying is what we are pointing out and responding to because it unfortunately is a growing number of people who are believing the same thing. But okay, so understanding that we move on. How do you not believe in outer space existing? Now there are many who believe the moon was never visited by the astronauts and that it's all a lie, but many of them don't even go this far to say space itself isn't real. So what's going on here? Well, rooted in the flat earth theory, their belief is there is a sun and moon, but only that they aren't round spheres, but flat disks themselves, okay? And that they're self-illuminating, both of them, going around the sky and are at the same time at a distance of only a few thousand miles up in the sky, not millions of miles away. Many flat earthers also say that the stars and planets are embedded in the dome itself, while the sun and moon are just below the hard dome over us. And flat earthers also often use the Bible to support their belief, especially Genesis 1, 6, and 7, which says, Then God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which are, were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. So the evening and the morning were the second day. Now, the flat earthers also often quote Revelation 7.1 and chapter 20 verses 7 through 8, where the term four corners of the earth is used. Although when looking at its context and cultural terminologies of the time it was written, this was figurative language of that time period to express the four directions of the compass and from which the wind blows. But I digress to the main thing here. You see, in their misguided understanding of these Bible verses, they emphatically say 
that that is proof that God placed this space between what is below and from what is above, leaving a physical airfield barrier enclosing the earth, like a, like a protective or glass-like dome, if you will. And it separates and keeps us protected from the waters above us. Now, I'm not saying Tyler Owens is saying he uses and believes in the Bible for this, but what he says represents this growing view by many that this glass dome over a flat earth, like a snow globe, if you will, is it, as in that's all there is. In other words, there is nothing beyond this ceiling. No space, no planets, no stars, or, or nothing above the limit of the dome ceiling. They believe also that all that we've been told and have seen in videos and pictures of outer space is all a massive, coordinated lie from the government and scientific community, and that they have deceived us and have so for decades. So what you're saying is that in this day and age, and even all the decades before it since the space race began, where countless eyes are looking at everything others are doing, Hundreds of thousands of people involved in these projects, ready, they're just ready to be the first whistleblower to reveal the lies of others within seconds and get the fame and money for doing it. That with all the cameras and information vultures out there in the world, that the government and scientists are all deceiving these billions of people on Earth with just pictures and videos of outer space. Yeah, I don't think so. But what matters more is what God tells us plainly in his word. The scriptures, says, the, the scriptures say that God created the sun, moon, and planets, known by the writer of Genesis simply as the greater and lesser lights. They just knew the sun and moon and these greater lights and the rest as the lesser lights in the sky. So here they were placed in the firmament above us, these objects. This firmament or sky and the expanse stretched out by God. They saw this firmament, or the sky in heaven, as an infinite broad space above where birds fly, then clouds form, and where rain comes from, and then the sun, moon, and stars are there. The idea the earth is an encased dome is not sufficiently verified at all in the words of the original languages themselves, nor in ancient Near East literature and its differing cultures and their differing descriptions of the sky above and earth below. But the really bigger question here is not even what Owens and Flat Earth theorists say, but why they are saying it and why a growing number of people are accepting these ideas. The why lies in what is called post-truth. We live in a post-truth age and society. Now by post-truth, it is meant that people can see the objective, verifiable, ascertained uh, facts yet still deny them and instead embrace their own opinions and ideas and feelings of what something is or isn't. Their own truth, in other words. And in this case with Tyler Owens and others like him, we're seeing a post-truth denial of both the biblical and secular facts that are actually in total agreement with each other. But in one way, can you really blame them? In the last five years or so especially, our world has been subjected to some of the most monumental deceits and lies of all time. What COVID was, a vaccine that supposedly prevents COVID, then didn't, Hunter Biden's laptop not being real, now we know it is, critical race theory and intersectionality, global warming, and I could go on and on with all the lies deceiving our populace. And some people still believe those things even when it has been disproven over and over again with the object, uh, objective facts. I don't believe in God, I believe in science. Because I only believe in science. You only believe in science. So when people are lied to repeatedly by those authoritative entities that promise to be our protector and deliverer of justice and in whom we put so much trust in, then people don't believe them anymore and they begin to form their own erroneous belief systems themselves. It's a repeat of the boy who cried wolf story but on steroids and it's really happening. This same distrust by people uh, and the forming of their own belief systems not built on facts has also affected the church and pushed people into embracing deconstructionism. That, dis that uh, it, it disarms and denies Jesus and the gospel and the doctrines of the faith God gave us. They, they deconstruct it 
one piece at a time so as to not believe and so that others will not believe. The Word of God gave us warning about this and instruction on how to respond as believers in 2 Timothy 4 verses 3-5. through 5. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. So this whole uh, denial of objective facts and biblical facts has increasingly pushed people, many people away from considering God and the gospel altogether in the first place. This is why we must be firm in the faith and abide in Jesus and his word. Just as he told us in John chapter 15, verses 4 through 6, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. God also has carefully instructed us to make sure what is taught is truly from him, from his word, and not to just accept the beliefs that come from man into the church. For instance, it's, he tells us this in 1 John chapter 4, verses 1-4. through 4. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So let us remain faithful to the plain and literal understanding of the text of Scripture. Let's be authentic followers of Jesus, living our lives authentically in front of those who don't know Christ, and also between each other's followers of Jesus. Not pretending to know everything, but believing firmly in the one who has shown us everything we do need to know about the world around us and ourselves and about God. Let's be the gospel and let's share the gospel with those who don't know Christ so that they can hear Jesus, see Jesus, and know Jesus to be saved, forgiven of sin, and have eternal life now and forevermore. Well, I hope this has helped you to understand it more. What are your thoughts? Express your ideas about this in the section for replying and commenting or email uh, me at info at truthunbound.org. Hey, don't forget to click on like, subscribe, and follow, and then also to share the link to this podcast today. And remember to follow Jesus, because when you follow him, you'll always follow the truth.